Hey everybody, it's Bobby, and welcome to Eagle's Nest Online. If this is your first time tuning in with us, I want to extend a special welcome just to you. And I want to invite you out to join us when we can come together at our physical location again. Today will look a lot like what you'd experience on a Sunday morning. We'll start with some amazing music, worshiping the Lord in song, and then we'll hear a powerful and inspiring message from Pastor Lee. Hey, make sure that you're following us on social media and that you visit our website regularly so that you can stay connected with the amazing things that we have going on throughout the week. We love you so much and we can't wait to see you again. Thank you for tuning in. And now let's worship together. Hey, how you doing everybody? We are so excited that you're here to worship with us online. So if you're part of Eagles Nest Church or you're worshiping with us around the world, come on, stand to your feet, get out of your bed, dance, move, clap your hands, celebrate because Jesus is alive and we're here to worship him. Let's go. Come on, I know you guys know this song, so it should be really easy to sing along, okay? We all know that God's love is everything. And we can't live, we can't move, we can't even have our being without him. So we celebrate his love. We rise and declare that no one nowhere compares to your love. You are holy, stand and we shout. We can't live without your love.
healing love. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Come on, are you tired yet? You're tired yet? You've been jumping around with us? Were you jumping with us? Yeah. I hope you were. I hope you were. We celebrate a good God. Hallelujah. He's good. I know it may not seem like it right now, but he's good. In our low times, he's good. In our high times, he's good. All the time, God is good. Yes. And God is good what? All the time. All the time. That's the God that we serve. We serve an incredible God. A God that deserves our praise, our honor. A God that deserves the glory. We adore you. And so right where you are, if you want to lift your hands with us and just say, I surrender. Come on, just surrender to the Lord with us. Come on. We bless you. You are the source of my strength. You are the strength of my life. I lift my hands in total praise to you, to you. Come on, say that with us. Say you are. Come on. You are the source of my strength. Say so you're the strength of my life. Come on. You are oh, yeah. the yeah. strength of my life. I lift my hands. I lift my hands. In total, In total praise. praise. Oh, to yeah. you. To you. Come on, let's say that again together. Come on. Say, say you are. You are. You strength of my life. You are oh, yeah. the strength of my life. So I lift my hands. I lift my hands. In total. In total praise, praise to you. To you. Come on, we're going to say that again. Come on. Say you are. Yeah. Oh yeah. The of my strength. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody. You are 
worship you, Lord, yes. Oh, we worship you, God, yeah. Come on, right where you are, right where you are. Come on, just worship, just worship. Just worship, just worship. He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the hallelujah. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Feel the atmosphere. Feel your room right now. Feel your kitchen. Feel your house right now. Father, we worship you. We worship you. We honor you. We bless you. There's no one like you. Hallelujah. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Pastor Lee. I'm here with my wife, Martika, and we are so delighted that you decided to join us today at Eagle's Nest. Welcome to our online experience. Hey, if you are an Eagle's Nest member, I just want you to know that I miss you so much. I can't wait till we get back together. You know, we have been uh, practicing social distancing, and to be honest with you, uh, I don't really like that word. Uh, I I prefer physical distancing because we've been still Uh, being social with people. We've been doing ministry. We've been reaching out to people online. We've been connecting with people. We're still involved in people's lives because even though the building is closed, ministry is still happening. So again, thank you all for hanging out with us today at Eagle's Nest Church. And my wife wants to uh, welcome some very special guests. We want to welcome those of you who are visiting with us online for the very first time. Thank you so much for joining us. As a matter of fact, we'd love to connect with you. So please make sure that you fill out our first time guest form online at eaglesnestchurch.org. Or if you're listening to us on YouTube, please click the link below. Also, we've got a fantastic Mother's Day contest coming up. Mother's Day is next Sunday, so make sure that you enter your mother into this contest. What we want you to do is to email us at info at eaglesnestchurch.org and tell us how amazing your mother is. And five wonderful moms are going to win a gift card of $200 each. So please make sure that you enter your mom into this contest. Oh man, that sounds like an awesome contest. Five, I mean, you say five people we're going to choose and they get what? A $200 Visa gift card. Oh man, that's all right. I think I'm going to enter that too, okay? All right, so hey, we just want you to know how happy, again, we are to have you to join us today. We believe God is going to speak to you today, so stay right where you are. Maybe you're at home, maybe you're in your car, maybe you're just hanging out with some friends, and I just pray that God will bless you. Now is a time in our service that we call giving back to God. It's where we worship the Lord uh, with what he has given us, and we give a portion of that back to him. So I want you to welcome Bobby Johnson. Hey family, this is the portion of our service that we call giving back to God. Giving back to God is just an opportunity for us to exercise our faith and to honor God for all of his faithfulness. There are three convenient ways to give. You can mail your gift to P.O. Box 1048 Alpharetta, Georgia 30009. Or you can text your gift to 770-464-5989. And finally, you can visit our website, eaglesnestchurch.org, and give your gift there. Let me share a scripture with you. It comes from Luke chapter 6, verse 38 in the NIV, and it reads, Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you give, it will be given to you. Now, wait a minute, guys. I know we're living in a time where toilet tissue hoarding is a real thing. In times like this of such uncertainty, we tend to clench on and cling to everything that we have. But the scripture is encouraging us to still give. It says, give and it will be given unto you. Giving is an opportunity to, yes, be a blessing to other people, especially through the local church. But it's also a way that God can pour into our own lives. It's such an amazing time. So let's just be careful today that as we prepare our gifts, that we examine the measure that we're using. Let's not filter our gifts through the measure of fear and anxiety. But let's make sure that we filter it through faith and expectancy. 
So let me just pray for you. I simply want to ask, Father, that you would increase us in this area of generosity so that you can pour into our lives and cause us to be able to be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Take out your Bibles or your devices and meet me in the book of James. The book of James is located in the New Testament, and we're going to be exploring the first chapter of James, verses 2 through 4, and I'm going to be reading it from the New American Standard Bible, and it reads, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. I want to speak to you today from the subject, testing positive. Let me say that again, testing positive. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you and we ask that you will speak to us through your word. But Lord, we don't just want to be hearers of your word. We want to be doers of your word. So Father, I pray, oh God, by the grace of God, that you will help us to execute, to carry out what we learn today. And so now, Lord, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight. Father, help me to encourage your people today. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. One of the biggest fears that people have right now is testing positive for the coronavirus. This pandemic is making everybody uneasy. I mean, people are doing all they can do not to catch the virus. For instance, uh, uh, people are washing their hands, which leads uh, me to ask the question, my God, what were you doing before the virus? But nonetheless, people are washing their hands. People are practicing social distancing. People are wearing face masks. People are staying at home. People are avoiding large gatherings. So this pandemic has called, caused us to change our way of life. But testing positive for the coronavirus is not a good thing. It means you have the virus, which means that you will either have to be quarantined or hospitalized. It could even mean death. If you have to take the COVID-19 test, you want it to come back negative, not positive. In other words, you don't want to test positive for the coronavirus. But there is also another test I want to tell you about today. And in this test, you do want to test positive. It is the test of our faith. You see, some of my friends who have taken the coronavirus test tell me that they take a Q-tip and they stick the Q-tip up their nose. Man, that sounds very painful. And they tell me that it is very painful. So that is the way they administer the test for COVID-19. Well, again, there is another test, and it is the test of our faith. And the way that this test is administered is through trials. It is through adversity. So the way God tests us is through trials and through adversity. And so he wants us to come out and test positive, not to test negative. So that's what I want to talk to you about today. How do you test positive when you are experiencing adversity? How do you test positive when things aren't going the way you planned? You see, the way God tests us is through our faith. So I want to ask you two questions this morning. Number one is, why does God permit trials? Why does God permit adversity? So that's question number one. Question number two is, how do you know when your faith tests positive? So again, question number one, why does God permit trials? And question number two, how do you know when your faith has tested positive? First of all, let me say that trials are inevitable. If you are living in this world, either you are in a trial like many of us are in right now with this virus. All over the world, we are experiencing 
adversity, we are experiencing discomfort, um, we are experiencing an inconvenience, and it is a serious inconvenience. So either you are in a trial, headed to a trial, or coming out of a trial. So trials are a part of life. So back to this first question. Why does God cause or permit trials? Let me give you three things to look at taken from these verses in James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. Number one, God causes or permits trials to test our faith. Okay? So it's a test, and what is God trying to test? He's trying to test our faith. So if you're going through something, it is a test of your faith. Let's see what the Word says in James chapter 1. It says, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. So why does God cause or permit trials? It is because of the testing of our faith. So in this verse, notice what it says. It says, consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials. Isn't that interesting? It, it, didn't, it didn't say if you encounter various trials. It said, consider it all joy, when you encounter various trials. So the assumption is you're going to experience trials in your life, and trials are unavoidable. And then it says when you encounter various trials. I mean, that means all kind of trials. In fact, the Greek word uh, various in this context means multicolored trials. Trials of all kind of colors, physical trials, emotional trials, marital trials, financial trials, relationship trials, health trials. I could go on and on and on. And I don't have to tell you because a lot of you all have experienced multicolored trials, trials of all kind. So why does God permit or cause trials, it is because he is trying to test our faith. Now let's look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 and 7 from the New Living Translation. This is a powerful verse, you all. It says, so be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead. And I believe that is the word of the Lord to us right now. There is wonderful joy ahead. Even though you must endure many trials for a little while. In other words, trouble don't last always. And then it says, these trials will show that your faith is genuine. So you see, convenience and perfect circumstances don't really test our trials. It says, these trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. So the way gold is purified is you have to put it on the fire. And the heat gets the impurities out of gold. And you see, when we go through trials and tribulations, just like what we're going through now, it ought to make us better. It ought to purify us. So it says it is being tested as fire test and purifies gold. Though your faith, though our faith, is far more precious than gold. Look at what it says again. It says, so when your faith remains strong through many trials, so you got to remain strong when you're going through a trial. It says, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. So we have to stay strong, ladies and gentlemen, through our trials. So in order for you to go to the next level spiritually, how about this? In order for you to go to the next level in your marriage, in order for you to go to the next level in your business, in order for you to go to the next level in your finances, in order for you to go to the next level in your career, you have to pass a test. 
You have to go through the fire and you must always pass a test. It's just like being in school. In order for you to go to the next grade, you have to take a test that will determine whether you can be promoted to the next grade. So I'm hoping that you are ready to be promoted by God. You see, trials bring out stuff in us to let us know whether or not we are truly ready to be promoted in God. So trials test our faith. So God causes or permits trials to test our faith. Number two, why does God cause or permit trials? He does it to increase our endurance. So I like this one, to increase our endurance. Look at what James says again. He says, Knowing that the testing of your faith, remember we talked about how your faith has to be tested, but what happens when your faith is tested? It produces endurance. You see, you, you can't be, you can't have endurance, you can't have patience. Some versions call it patience. You can't have that unless you are tested. Unless you, you push your body, uh, your cardiovascular system from running and doing cardio, you can't get endurance. And it is the same with, in life. You can't build up your endurance with easy circumstances. So the word endurance is made up of two Greek words that mean to remain under. In other words, when you are going through a trial... You need to stay put. You need to remain under until the purpose of the trial has been accomplished. So, again, endurance means to stay under, to remain put. In other words, don't bail out. If you bail out, you can never get endurance. Again, back to a running analogy. If you're jogging and you're trying to build up your endurance, or if you're working out and you quit as soon as you get tired, you will never build up your endurance. So it is with us spiritually. When we get trials, when we go through tribulation, if we quit, if we bail out, then we're not going to get strong. We're not going to build up spiritual endurance. So that's what the Apostle James is saying to us today. We have to stay put. It's almost like uh, a cake in an oven. Yeah, I I love sweets. And uh, if you want to bake a cake, it is so important that you take that cake out of the oven at the right time. Now, here's an amazing thing about baking is you have to put the cake in the oven and you have to take it out right at the right time. If you take the cake out too early it won't be that good. So it has to endure enough heat to come out perfect. And that is the same with us today, ladies and gentlemen. We have to be able to endure enough heat, and you're going to see this in a minute, so we can come out perfect and complete and mature. We can't bail out. It's almost like being on an operating table. You see, God is operating on many of us right now. We have more time to stay at home. We have more things to think about. And God is doing surgery right now in some of our lives. In fact, even before this virus, God was doing surgery in many of our lives. And so what we have to do when God is operating on us, you have to stay on the operating table and let God cut you and let him operate on you. I know it hurts. I know it doesn't feel good to go through a trial. Again, a trial in a relationship or a health trial, or a a financial trial, or emotional trial, but whatever you're going through, in order for you to get endurance, in order for you to build your endurance up, you have to stay put. You have to endure. So number two is, one of the reasons God causes or permits trials is to increase our endurance. Number three, Why does God cause or permit trials? It is to achieve spiritual maturity. I mean, that's pretty powerful right there, to achieve spiritual maturity. In other words, so you and I can grow up, so we can be more like Jesus. 
And we become more like Jesus, believe it or not, when we're tested. So, to increase our spiritual endurance, let's look at James chapter 1, verse 4. And it says, And let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. All right, so look at this again. You have to let endurance have its perfect results. So you won't get endurance unless you're tested, and you don't get endurance if you quit. So in order for endurance to have its perfect result is you have to stay put, you have to keep going, and you can't give up. But this is what will happen if you don't give up. You may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. What does that mean? So the word perfect and complete means to grow up. It means to mature. So spiritual maturity is the process of you and I becoming more like Jesus. That's what it means when it says that we will achieve spiritual or spiritual maturity. So again, these three things. Why does God cause or permit trials? Let me go over these three things again. To test our faith, to increase our endurance, and to achieve spiritual maturity. Now, notice I said, why does God cause or permit trials? You see, I know in the Christian world, we often blame negative things on the devil. Everything is the devil. Well, the devil is this, or the enemy is this, and I understand that we are in spiritual warfare, and there is a such thing as the enemy, as Satan, as the devil. And a lot of the things that we go through, yes, absolutely, the enemy is throwing arrows at us, whether that be sickness or whether that can be confusion or the lack of peace. But, but here's the deal. God is in control. And so in order for these things to get to us, it has to still pass through the hands of God. So God doesn't necessarily cause these things, but he certainly allows it or permits it. But, but he permits it for our good, not for our bad. You see, God tests us to develop us. Let me say that again. God sends us through test to develop us. The enemy tests us or tempts us to destroy us. Now, testing us to develop us and testing us to destroy us can look exactly the same. Uh, I believe it is in Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew chapter 4, when Jesus was tempted by the devil. But before he was tempted by the devil, the word says he was led to the wilderness by the Spirit of God wait a minute, how could the Spirit of God lead Jesus to the wilderness to be tempted by the devil? Well, it was the same temptation, but two different purposes. Again, God was leading him to the wilderness to be tested so that he could develop. Satan was tempting him to destroy him. So a part of us growing strong in the Lord is God permitting some things to come into our life that we may not like, but it makes us stronger and we're supposed to be victorious when those things come. All right? I want to close with this second question that I ask. How do you know when your faith has tested positive? Again, the title of this message is Testing Positive. Because I want your faith to test positive, not negative. So how do you know if your faith is testing positive? How do you know you're passing the test, especially during this pandemic? I want to give you just a couple of things for you to consider. Number one, you have to have joy. Say joy. Yes, you have to have joy. Now, I I know that sounds counterintuitive. How... Can we have joy when we're not satisfied with our circumstances? I mean, how can you have joy when you're going through a test? Well, let's see what the Apostle James says about this. He says, Consider it all joy, my brethren, he's talking to believers, 
when you encounter various trials. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to jump for joy every time you have uh, a problem or every time you go through something, but, but you're, you're considering it joy because you know on the other side of this, you're going to be better because of it. You know that God has a purpose for this, and you know that you were built to endure this. So consider it all joy. That The pain that you're going through, you consider it joy because you know on the other side of that pain, there is victory. Again, I love to use sports analogies because I spent so much of my life playing sports, but it is not joyful uh, getting in shape. Uh, when you're preparing for football season. I played football. It was not joyful. In fact, before the season started, we had practice two to three times a day. I hated it. In training camp, it was so tough. It was not joyful. But at the same time, I didn't like it. I also had joy at the same time because I knew these trials and tribulations of training camp were getting me ready for the season so that we could be victorious when we face our opponent. So that's what James is saying. Consider it all joy. No, you don't necessarily rejoice in your situation, but you're rejoicing because you know that God has your back. So have you tested positive with joy? How has your attitude been lately? Have you been depressed? Have you been walking around dismayed? Have you been down and out? Or have you been looking at the other side or, or the end result of what you could be at the end of this pandemic? The second thing we need to do if you are testing positive is you have to have perspective. Perspective. That means the way you process stuff mentally Uh, It ought to be different. Your perspective ought to change. And one thing about adversity, you all, it will change your perspective. Let's look and see what James says. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Knowing. So when you go into trials, don't let trials depress you. Don't even let trials surprise you because you should know when you're in a trial that the testing of your faith produces endurance. So your perspective is, Lord, even though I'm going through this, I know this is going to make me better. Lord, I don't like this, but, but I'm going to have a, a good perspective. I'm, I'm going to think good thoughts and, and, and not bad thoughts. I'm not going to let the devil take my mind all kind of places. So you have to have perspective. Number three, or the third way to determine if you have tested positive is this. You have fruit of the Spirit. Let me say that again. You have fruit of the Spirit. In other words, people can look at your life and they see positive fruit. They see things in you that uh, represent Jesus Christ. Uh, In fact, your fruit is contagious. So what is fruit or what is the fruit of the Spirit? Let's look at this verse. Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. Are you loving more during this virus, during this pandemic? Has it caused you to appreciate people more in your family and your friends? I hope so, and you ought to have love as one of the fruits of the Spirit. And then it says joy. I've already talked to you about joy, but do you have joy or are you walking around depressed? But then I love this one, peace. You see, peace is not determined by your circumstances. Peace is determined by what's going on on the inside of you. I mean, it could be a storm on the outside and you can still have peace because your peace is rooted in Jesus Christ. Patience. Oh, Lord knows we've learned a lot about patience. We don't know when this virus is going to be over. We don't know when things are going to get back to normal. In fact, you all, I'm not even sure if I want everything to get back to normal. 
because there's so much to learn from this. And when we go through an experience like this, we have to learn what we need to throw away, what we need to discard, and what we need to continue to embrace. So patience is one of those things we have to have. A lot of you parents have uh, been tested in your patience because your children have been at home every day with you. Some of you all have turned into uh, teachers because you have had to homeschool your kids at home. And Lord knows you've had to have a lot of patience. Well, I'm hoping that your patience that you have had with your children will spill over into other areas of your life because patience is a fruit of the Spirit. Then it says kindness. You know, it's amazing that uh, this year is an election year, and I could just already see, you know, the Democrats and the Republicans going after each other and, and all this stuff. But you know what's amazing right now? There is a little bit more kindness. Because one thing about adversity, one thing about at, an adversity that impacts everybody just like 9-11 did, is we realize we're all in the same boat. And so let kindness be one of the fruits that you exemplify. Then it says goodness, doing the right thing. And then it says faithfulness. I love faithfulness because uh, faithfulness just means that you are consistent in what God has called you to do. And for some of you all, now that you have more time, you need to be faithful to do what God has called you to do. Since your life has slowed down, now is the time to write that book. Now it's time to get that business plan together. Now it's time to do those projects around the house. Be faithful to do what God has called you to do. And then it says gentleness and then self-control. So again, how do you know that your faith has tested positive? You have joy, you have perspective, and you have the fruit of the Spirit. So have you tested positive? It's never too late to test positive. But in order to test positive, you have to be rooted in something, or, or your faith has to be rooted in something. And your faith has to be rooted in Jesus Christ. So I want to pray for you right now. And I want to ask God to give you the fruit of the Spirit. And I want to ask God to, to bless you. And I want to ask God to uh, allow you to endure the test so when you get on the other side, you will be better tomorrow than what you are today. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for these men and women under the sound of my voice. Father, I ask that you will bless them. And I pray that they will test positive for joy. So if those people out there right now who are experiencing depression, and dismay, Lord, I pray that, that you will replace it with joy. Father, I also pray that you will give them perspective. And then lastly, and most importantly, Lord, I pray that you will give them the fruit of the Spirit. Lord, give them love, give them joy, give them peace, give them patience, give them kindness, give them goodness, give them faithfulness, give them gentleness, give them self-control. So now, Lord, I pray for every person right now that you will help them to endure whatever test that they are facing so that they can test positive. Not by their own willpower, but by God's power, by the Spirit of the Lord. So let me pray for you right now. There may be those of you out there who have never made a decision to follow Jesus Christ, and then there, then there may be some of you out there who uh, want to rededicate your life to Christ. And I just want to say this prayer for you right now. Dear Lord, we thank you for your word. And Father, right now I pray for those who want to give their heart to you. And if that is the case for you, I want you to repeat these words in your heart. Dear Lord, come into my life. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I believe that God raised you from the dead. And Father, right now, I pray that you will come into my life. Again, forgive me of all of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Make me a new person. Lord, I give my heart to you. And so, Father, I thank you for saving me and making me a new person. 
And then I want to pray for those who want to rededicate their life. Maybe you have uh, been depressed. Maybe you have gotten off of your game spiritually, especially during this pandemic. And I want to pray that God will stir your heart again for him. So, Father, I pray for those people who have gotten away from you. And, uh, Lord, right now I pray that as they turn around, as they dedicate themselves to you, that by your spirit you will strengthen them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that sermon, testing positive. And no matter what you're going through, I want you to test positive, not negative, as it relates to your faith. Hey, if you said that prayer, if you committed your life to Jesus Christ for the first time, all you need to do is go on our website, eaglesnestchurch.org, and you're going to see a place for you, uh, some information we would like for you to fill out because we'd like to get in touch with you. In fact, we have some information that we want to give you. So please let us know who you are. If you committed your life to Christ or if you rededicated your life to Christ. Again, I hope you enjoyed the word, and uh, I want you to keep soaring because God has something great for you. God bless you. I'll see you next week. Oh, wow, guys, that was so amazing. If you enjoyed it as much as I did, make sure that you're liking it and you're sharing it on your social media. And don't forget to follow us on ours. You can follow us at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget we have those three convenient ways to give, so please give before you get up from your couch and make sure that you're faithful in that area as well. So guys, oh man, if you need prayer for any reason, or if you'd like to give your life to Christ, come on over to our website at eaglesnestchurch.org. Finally, for those of you joining us for the first time, or for those of you that want to connect and be a part of the Eagles Nest family, visit our website at eaglesnestchurch.org because we have some amazing people ready to connect with you. Listen, if you're watching us on YouTube, click that link below in the description so that we can reach out to you. And let me just bless you before we go. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he protect you and smile upon you and be gracious to you. May he show you his favor and give you his peace. Hey, Eagles, I love you and have a great week.